Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what is convergent, uh, convergent evolution? Now when we talk about evolution, we often talk about convergent and divergent evolution. Let's understand the convergent evolution. So organisms in unrelated groups show a similar adaptation by modification or evolution and evolve similar. So it means convergent. What does convergent means? It means that when like you would have learned about converging mirror, diverging mirror in physics. You would have learned about rays converging to a point or rays diverging from a point. So we use converge and diverge in those sense. So converge means different rays coming and meeting at one common point. So that is convergent. So here also the same thing is happening. So organisms and unrelated groups, that is different organisms, like they are no way related to each other. Maybe one is a bird, the other one is an insect, the other one could also be a terrestrial animal. So the organisms not are not related. So un, uh, unrelated organisms, but they similarly adapt just for their survival in the environment. They adapt in similar ways and that's how they evolve in similar ways. So that is called convergent evolution. That is different organisms like unrelated organisms evolving in similar way and that's how they have something which is like doing the same function in all of them. So that is called convergent evolution. So when we talk about this convergent evolution, we see that analogous organs provide an evidence of convergent evolution. So what are analogous organs? So analogous organs are those which perform the same function but they have different structure and they have different uh, evolutionary origin but they perform the same function w what i was telling you just now like since these are unrelated groups for example if you talk about a bird and if you talk about uh, a human being so a bird and a human being structurally they are very much different from each other right so they are unrelated groups so analogous organs means the structure wise everything will be different but their function might be the same but for survival, the birds or the insects or uh, maybe the fishes, they might have made some adopt adaptation in similar ways and have come up with organs which perform the similar function. So basically, whenever you have analogous organs, the analogous organs talk about convergent evolution. Now, let us look at some analogous organs. Let's look at some examples. For example, the eye of octopus and eye of cat. So if you look at it, the structure of the eye of octopus and cat, first of all, octopus and cat, they are unrelated groups. They are not related organisms, like they're completely not related. But the eyes in both of them, again, structurally, the eyes are different, but the eyes are performing the same function. So eye of octopus and eye of cat are analogous organs, and they also provide an evidence of convergent evolution. Convergent evolution means Cats and octopuses are very much different from each other, but still both of them have adapted in some similar way just to see things because eyes are used for viewing things, see, to see things. Just to see things, both of them have adapted in some or the other way and have come up with structures with similar functions. So that entire concept or that way of evolution is called convergent evolution. Let's look at one more example. The stings of honeybee and scorpions. Fins of fishes and flippers of whales. So if you look at the fins of fishes and the flippers, so these are the flippers of whales and these are the fins of fishes. So structurally, they are definitely not the same. There is a huge difference in their structure, in their origin. But when you look at their purpose, both the fins and the flippers, they help the respective fishes and the whales to swim in water. So their function is the same. Now in a similar way, if you look at bats and birds, so both bats and birds, they are not related groups. So bats do not fall under the category of birds. So bats are mammals. So bats and birds, they are not related groups, but still both of them evolved with wings and wings help both of them to fly. So the function of the wings is similar. So in both of them, you, wings help them to fly, but their structures are different. They are unrelated group of organisms. So these are all examples of convergent evolution. 
In fact, when you look at the presence of wings, wings are present in many different organisms. For example, their wings are present in insects, birds, bat, and insects, birds, bat, they are all unrelated group of organisms, but still all these organisms they wanted something they wanted to have something which helped them to fly and that's how they have wings so even though the wings are structurally different but they perform the same function and that is how they are analogous organs and they are evidence of convergent evolution so please understand what is convergent evolution because here i have listed only a few examples but you have many many more examples of convergent evolution and uh, it is quite an important topic as well because many times you are given just a random example and you are asked whether it is convergent or divergent evolution. So only when you know exactly what is convergent evolution, you will be able to answer it clearly. Now let us look at divergent evolution. So it is going to be just the opposite. So here accumulation of differences between groups leading to the formation of new species. So here you are talking about this related groups of organisms, but you would look at some differences because of which they are giving rise to new species. So divergent evolu evolution, here we talk about the homologous organs. So homologous organs means the organs which have the same structure, same origin, but different functions. So homologous organs would have different function, but same structure and origin. So that means here we are not talking about unrelated group of organisms. We are talking about related group of organisms because only related group of organisms will have similar structure, right? So they have similar structure, but over a period of time, those similar structures, they are performing different functions. So that is called divergent evolution. So from one common point, from the same origin, over period of time, things are changing and that's how they are performing different functions. It's diverging. So that is divergent population, divergent evolution. So let us look at an example. Let us talk about the Darwin finches. So that is one of the very good examples of divergent evolution. So in the Darwin finches, we see that, I mean, if you look at the story of the Galapagos Island, there was just one species which reached that island initially, right? And then over a period of time, we all know the story of the Darwin's finches. Now, over a period of time, we saw that if you, if you look at here, here we have shown four species of the same finches. So if you just focus on their beaks, you see they have different types of beaks. Some have long, stout beaks, some have very short beaks. So they all have different types of beaks. So from one species, around 15 species diverged. So you started from one species, from one species, some 15 species were formed. And how were they formed? Because over a period of time, there were small, small variations in those species, which helped them to adapt to the environment better, which helped them to survive better. And those small, small changes gradually gave rise to new species. So here you are starting from the same point. You're starting from one common uh, or group and then you are diverging to many new species. So that's divergent evolution. Now Darwin's finches is one classic example of divergent evolution. Besides that, you also have more examples like mouth parts of cockroach, butterfly and honeybee. So even though structurally the mouth parts might look to be the same, but looking at the food habits of each of these, like the cockroach, they generally eat small bits of maybe small insects or small bits of leftover food lying here and there. Whereas if you look at a honeybee, they, what do they do? They suck nectar from the flowers. So their food habits are different and therefore the function which their mouth parts perform that is different, but structurally they are the same. So these are examples of homologous organs. Similarly, the thorn in bougainvillea and the tendrils in cucurbita. So structurally they are the same. The thorns in bougainvillea, they and the tendrils in cucurbita. So looking at their structures, you might feel that they are not the same because this is how the tendrils look like and this is how the thorns look like. So look wise, they are not the same, but if you look at their origin, so origin wise, they are the same because the thorn in bougainvillea and the tendrils in cucurbita, both of them origin from the, both of them arise from the axillary bird of the respective plant. So origin wise, they are the same. But when you look at the function, the thorns help in protection because the thorns are sharp. So it doesn't allow any other organism to come and harm the plant because the thorns will kind of uh, 
you know, uh, it, it will hurt the animal. So it protects the plant. Whereas if when you talk about the tendrils, so these tendrils, they are soft and they kind of climb over any mechanical support. So they provide mechanical support to the plant. So the, the purpose or the function of tendrils and thorns are totally different in these two plants, but they are the origin wise, they are similar. Therefore, these are also examples of homologous organs. That is, both the structures are arising from the same axillary bird, but they are performing totally different different functions. Four limbs of lizard, frog, bat, horse and humans. So if you look at the purpose of four limbs of each of them, when you talk about a lizard, does a lizard walk the same way we humans walk? No, the lizards, they kind of crawl on the wall and their four limbs help them to crawl. But our four limbs, what do they do? Now, when we walk, we do not even take help of our four limbs. Our four limbs are the hands it, which helps us to do various activities and it doesn't primarily help us in locomotion. Similarly, when you talk about the four limbs of the frog or the bat, in case of bat, bat can fly. So their four limbs are modified in such a way that it helps them to fly. You talk about horse, talk about frog. So all of them have different types of movements and their four limbs perform different function accordingly. But structure wise, all of these are four limbs. So structure they are the same origin wise they are the same but function wise they are different so just remember this simple thing do not get confused with convergent and divergent evolution convergent means different unrelated organisms but they have adapted in some or the other way such that they have arrived at some common point that is they have something which is now doing the same purpose doing the same function for all of them so that is convergent when you talk about divergent that means different organisms or different parts which started from the same origin but over a period of time now they are performing different functions so that is divergent evolution Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.